Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everybody listening and to everybody watching. Hopefully, um, you'll find this beneficial. I'm really, uh, I found even listening to the other speakers, uh, it quite beneficial to hear what they have to say. But let me just briefly say a little bit about myself for those who don't know me. I was actually raised a Roman Catholic and I converted or reverted to Islam about 10 years ago. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And one of the reasons why converted actually is related to this class called Christological Controversies. So, you know, it's, it's, I'm really passionate about it. Uh, and you'll see that if you, if you join the class, I think that you'll enjoy it a lot. Now, wh one of the reasons, as I said, that I'm so passionate about it is because it's one of the things that I had a problem with and a big issue with when I was a Christian. What are some of these controversies in early Christianity dealing with the nature of Christ and who he was? Is he God? And if he is God, in what sense is he part of a trinity? All these type of difficult questions. They're very um, interesting and difficult to answer. We're going to be exploring them, inshallah ta'ala, in this course. Now, what we're going to be talking about is, and it's going to be a lot, so I hope that you guys are ready and really interested in the information because I think it's very beneficial, not only for yourself, but in terms of giving da'wah to Christians and, uh, yeah, just really to learn how to accurately understand what the early Christians believe, inshallah. Now, I'm going to be going over some of the early uh, Christian sources uh, what the history was, how did this man, Jesus of Nazareth, uh, peace be upon him, who Muslims believe is a true prophet of God and the Messiah, how did he become this figure in Christianity in which he's worshipped and all of a sudden he is God and he's the second member of the Trinity? How did this happen? Because we as Muslims, we don't believe that this is the message that he preached. So it's a very interesting historical question as to how did this actually happen? So that's one of the main questions that we're going to tackle is in early Christian history, what was the development of the theology? How did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, come to be known as the God man? And was there political factors at play? We're going to be looking at early what are called ecumenical council, uh, councils of the church, things like the Council of Nicaea. What was that all about? and other church councils that are probably less known to some of the audience. We're going to be looking at the factors surrounding them. Who was there? Who was invited? What did they have to say? What were the theological issues at play? What was debated? What was discussed? We're going to be going into all of these issues. We're going to even look at some of the early church fathers, what are known as the early, basically the early scholars of the religion of Christianity. What did they believe? Did those before the, uh, for example, the Nicene Creed before 325, did they believe that Jesus was God? If so, in what sense? And we're going to be looking at a lot of primary source material from early Christianity to really delve into some of these issues. Not only that, we want to know why they thought some of these things. Look, let's look at the reasoning behind it. You know, what? Why did they think that Jesus was God? Um, and what were the debates? Because there were different heresies. For example, a heresy is something that is declared to be unorthodox by the church, mainly by these ecumenical councils. What were the debates surrounding these ecumenical councils? What went out and became orthodox? What does orthodoxy teach? What is deemed heretical and why is it deemed heretical? We're going to be going into all of these different issues. Now, one of the reasons why I think it's so important to understand some of these issues is because I think that it will not only increase your understanding of Christianity, but it's going to help when you're speaking with other Christians in terms of Tao. Because one of the things that we want to do, even if we don't agree with a particular belief or uh religion, for example, Christianity and what they teach about Jesus, we want to know and understand what they believe and why and what was the historical development surrounding it. We want to. Why? Because we want to, when we speak to them, to accurately represent what they believe so that we can convey what we believe to be the true message, which is Islam. 
insha'Allah ta'ala. So this is very important. I feel it's very important for dawah, not just for yourself to internalize the information. Yeah, because it's great for you to learn more things, but you, to utilize this as Brother um, Hijazi had mentioned earlier, is to not just internalize it, to then use that information that you attain from these courses on the actual ground in field dawa. And I think that it will be very beneficial, uh, not only with my class. So I wanna encourage everybody to really look into these classes, take them seriously. If you're really interested in dawa, I would encourage everybody if they can to take as many courses as they possibly can. They're easily accessible online. And I think that you will gain a lot of information from them. What I want to do here is I want to read just one quote as an example to give you a little taste of something that we'll be going through. So there was an early church father by the name of Justin Martyr, and he was at the start of the second century. So right around the year 100, he wound up dying around 165. And he's a revered church father. So I just want to read a quote from him so you'll get a taste of what we're going to be looking at. And this is not just limited to this, but just an example. So he has a famous work called uh, The Dialogue with Trypho, who was, a, who was a Jew. And in chapter 56, he says this, and I quote, I shall attempt to persuade you. He's trying to persuade um, this Jewish fellow. Since you have understood the scriptures of the truth, what I say, that there is and that there is said to be another God and Lord subject to the maker of all things, who is also called an angel because he announces to men whatsoever the maker of all things above whom there is no other God wishes to announce them. So in the same passage, he calls Jesus another God, which is quite shocking for some people to hear. But even within that, he says that this other God is subject to the maker of all things who above him, there is no other God. And this is a primary source material from an early church father. So what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at some of this material and we're going to be breaking it down. Well, what does he actually mean? I thought God can't have anybody above him. Well, how could Jesus be God? And yet there's somebody above him. We're going to break these things down, understand them the best we can so that when we try to convey the message of Islam to other people and dialogue with Christians, we accurately represent what they believe. And then we can, at the same time, uh, reveal and explain the true message, message of Islam, inshallah. So with that, um, that concludes my you know opening on what the course is going to be about. And I just want to say again, I encourage everybody, not only my course, but to uh, sign up for the other courses because we have a lot of good stuff going on this semester, inshallah. Shalatabarakallah. Jazakallah khair for that very elaborative description on this course. Yeah, th this is probably one of, uh, one of my favorite courses as well, in addition to Logical Dawah. I find a lot of interest in this course. And if you, if you have an interest in Christianity and Islam and learning about the Christian doctrines to understand who the historical Jesus actually was, um, according to the facts, if you want to understand why Jesus is the most misunderstood, perhaps the most misunderstood figure in history, then this is the class for you. And also the kind of uh, titles, commonalities, and be able to build bridges with our Christian friends, inshallah ta'ala. So please do register for this course. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Um, Ustaz Jake is the right guy for this course, alhamdulillah. You can check out his YouTube channel, The Muslim Metaphysician, if you want to see some of his content and debates. Jazakallah khair. Allahu Akbar.